right from the start. Performance has been our driving force. All of BMW's knowledge concentrated in this innovative petrol or diesel engine. Lighter cars, more fuel efficient with lower emissions, enable enhanced driving pleasure. This is the new BMW Efficient Dynamics. Uh, 15, 19 Central African time, my time in yours on the 1873 FM, Tinashim Pasiri being the name as we continue uh, looking and also learning of the role societies play in the affairs of men in better understanding CSI using the example of Aspen Pharma Care. And in the studio with me, I'm joined by Blanca. Uh, Blanca, you just joined us. We never got to introduce you to our listeners out there. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you for having me. And we also joined by Mutuma Mawe. Yes, uh, we continue looking at this aspect of uh, societies. We're looking at a, ch a charter, trying to better understand the term chartered, and we went back to its historical uh, historical development. Yeah, and then he, uh, and the title chartered accounting was in use by 1855. The title spread to England and Wales with the granting of a charter to the. Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales in 1880, and Ireland with the chartering of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in Ireland in 1888. As you know, uh, the Beers was formed in 1888. So we're looking at the history even of Africa that uh, prior to this, there was no organization. So it's not like Europeans didn't also learn. So as, as you moved from Scotland, and you then get to England, then you go to Wales, then you go to Ireland. So these little islands, what did they know that we don't know? So Mr. Sad, I think had a, a persuasion of his father, who was also an accountant, yes. he ended up uh, being a chartered accountant. Then his life changed, and now we associate him not for the accounting genius. We associate him and his life, his identity has changed. Now he is Mr. Medicine. So the rest of his life, he will be known as someone who he didn't study to be. So we learn a lot about this, that maybe 100% of what you study may not be the identity that you take. Mm. You could be a medical doctor, I think you had Mr. Mrs. Zuma saying she looks up uh, to Dr. Anna, was it Mokokong? Mokokong. Yeah. But she is a medical doctor. And she does but what it, now? She's now a business, she's now a company, business, company. business okay. woman. Okay. So it just tells us it's not just a white thing that uh, actually the migration from one profession to another without uh, uh, regretting. Imagine you went into medicine, <laughs> and then you regretted why you are there. A whole seven years <laughs> later. Yeah. And like yeah. John Fairburn. John Fairburn was, uh, was a school dropout. Uh, he didn't finish medicine, but uh, he was uh, interested in poetry. But now he's known as the founder of what? Of all all Jews. Jews. So that's having said that uh, when you look at citizenship, we are talking about... Uh, accessibility mm -hmm. that when you go to the townships there are many black people who live in township who don't even know what happens to medicine who distributes medicines in the township and they live normally and they live long and they die satisfied that they know everything then you have mr sad who gets out of his way to say i want to discover what is in the townships and he, he made, he started his career in quick med, a, a prescription drug distribution com company in Blake Township mm. during apartheid. That money is no face. And there's no eyes. If you, if you want, you can deliver value, even in the most unlikely places. Mm. He may know more about township than we know. Mm. And we assume that no person who carries his name or names like him 
actually knows anything. And we are experts at what happens in townships. But the opportunities that are in the townships are many. If so you take it, the township economy and see how big it is, even if you take out af affirmative action out of it, you know what affirmative sh uh, uh, <laughs> shopping is? Yes. <laughs> affirmative shopping? Yeah. What is that? That's theft. <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess, you know, he did, regardless of being a CA and his background, he did what true entrepreneurs do, right? And he saw what a gap a in the market. What is true entrepreneur now? You are confusing. No, me. that's what they do. They see a gap in the market. That's, that's not what true. He saw. There's nothing true about that. Is that not true? No. No? Any person who sees a gap and fills it will get paid for it. But don't go and feel where there's no gap. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if he, you're going to go on radio, you, in the black market. If you are going to go on radio, the same thing you can start saying, I have discovered one thing. The ignorance among my friends is so high. They don't even know who Mr. Ask you, do you know a guy called uh, Stephen Bradley Sag? You know what they would do? They say, maybe I saw him in one movie. <laughs> <laughs> what is he famous for? So this ignorance is what causes what? A disaster in many of our communities. Then you, see, you look at Dictionary Chair the Sharks, a rugby union club. What is a club? It's a, a society. Mm. Huh? It's a network of people who love rugby. Then <clears throat> in 1997, together with Gus Attridge, he co-founded Aspen Pharmacare, a public company traded on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It has become the largest producer of generic medicines on the African continent. So when you look at CSI, uh, uh, Blanga, do you, do you know who pays for these gifts? When people receive gifts, you know who pays? Who? Just imagine. Because we see Ms. Uh, Mr. Saad uh, as an accountant mm. with no balance sheet. Yet today he's worth 1.1 billion. Where did the 1.1 billion come from? Hmm? Where did the 1 billion? Uh, it, it actually comes from the customers who are buy the medicine, who buy the drugs. So do you understand how powerful that is? Of course. That is the customer who is donating through the company. If you stop uh, drinking medicine called aspirin, <laughs> <laughs> would they have anything to give? They wouldn't. Would he be worth 1.1 billion? Absolutely not. It would be, be just a nightmare. Nothing. So it requires validation. Wealth requires validation. So when you hear we say responsible, let's, uh, let's look at what responsible, uh, what do they call it? It's called responsible what? Responsible corporate, corporate citizenship. citizenship. So there is corporate citizenship. Do you accept that? Mm -hmm. How do you define corporate citizenship? The, you are a citizen of which country? Of South Africa. And what would we call you? What would be your first name? In, uh, this in is terms of citizenship. A South African. It would be a natural. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, can. That you are a person. I can hold your hand. The corporate citizen, this is a creature mm -hmm. created by men armed with the same rights that a man has. It can sue, it can be sued, it can do most of the, the, those things except produce children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. <Ms. Sam>. Okay. <laughs> so this is what we are talking about. Have you ever seen a, a BBE certificate? Because you know in this country, South Africa, what people are, what people are asked to do is to pay for the sins of the past. And you call it corporate social and uh, social citizenship. You are not paying for now. Imagine you buy the medicine today and they become, the company becomes what? Successful. Then you have to pay for the sins of those people who are dead. That's what it says. So Aspen Heritage is firmly rooted in South Africa and the South African business remains a material contributor to the group. As such, Aspen is acutely aware of the need for transformation in South Africa, in, in South African society, in order to overcome 
the consequence of previous, not the present, discrimination and to create an equitable society in which all individuals have equal opportunities, free from prejudice. Do you see where we're going? Mm. Yeah. Can you have equal opportunities? Is it possible huh? to strive for that objective? Would it be desirable if we had equal no, it, w it wouldn't be desirable at all. I'm just trying to imagine all of us being able to access, uh, going to BMW, maybe to buy the uh, 760. It wouldn't it be desirable? It wouldn't be desirable. Imagine you go to a plane and all, all seats were first class. Would it be desirable? Because the, the people in first class pay for the people in economy. But they're in the same so plane. in essence, what are you saying about equal opportunity? That is a... It's a bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> and the sooner I get rid of it. <laughs> bad or unsustainable? It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> with that, we're just going to go on a short musical break. Uh, stay tuned with the 1873 FM. Your voice, your power. Ah, it's Big Ben. The feeling of despair has made it.